So what was the uh, the first distro that you actually swapped to? Uh, the first one I tried was Zorin OS because okay. it looked nice. Uh, it's based on Ubuntu, mm -hmm. uh, but that didn't last for very long. I eventually switched to Manjaro mm -hmm. because I also thought it looked cool. And then what, the first time Manjaro broke on me, I switched to Arch. And only recently <laughs> did I switch away from Arch to Fedora. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So you'll, is it Fedora Gnome, Fedora KDE? What do you want? It's gonna... Fedora Gnome okay. uh, because I like Gnome's built-in apps more, mm -hmm. like they're cleaner, but mm -hmm. I'm actually considering switching to all the KDE ones just because Gnome. <laughs> so, well, not, yeah. Yeah. I, I, we're definitely going to get more into that a bit later, but I do want to say that I do like the polish that Gnome has. I, I think their app UX is really nice. Yes. And I think the desktop is really well polished. It's the problem is the the stuff that's like not present that is the issue. Precisely. I love the way I love the theme that they have going on. Mm -hmm. Uh but I don't like how restrictive it is. So yeah. like I use Sway myself and the Nomaps kind of there's a lot of jank around that that I have I have to like have a script that imports all the GTK settings because it doesn't work properly, right. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned that you swap because of uh Cacoon. How did you even become aware of that application then if you were a Windows user? Was it like a random YouTube video you saw or? I think it was a, shoot, what's his name? I can't remember the guy's name. There was a YouTube video I saw about Cacoon. Uh, I, I feel bad for, oh, DistroTube. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, DistroTube four years ago made, oh uh, yeah, I guess that lines up. Four years ago, he made a video about Cacoon. Mm -hmm. And I'd been interested in Linux for a while, but I really wanted to try this weird text editor so mm. i said well may as well jump ship well on that note then are you actually still using cacoon or do you use something else every okay. day okay yeah, i okay. use it for work hmm i i think you were the first cacoon user i've actually run across there's not many of us the discord server has like 200 people in it mm -hmm. okay what actually sold you on that then because i, I kind of want to hear more about this text editor the tagline of it is it's vim but backwards so in vim you have ciw for change inside word or change around word yada yada mm -hmm. you have the verb and then noun mm -hmm. cacoon is the other way around you have the noun and then verb so you can essentially think of it as vim but always in visual mode okay so instead of ciw you do alt i w c okay okay Huh. And what that allows you to do is it allows you to refine your selection before you commit to changing something. Mm -hmm. So, for example, you can select the whole document, then you can press S, which uh, selects sub-selections within your selection. So you can type like S and then search for all occurrences of the, the word, mm -hmm. and then you can hit enter, and then you can change those. Mm -hmm. But if that's not exactly what you wanted, you can undo your selection and do something else, and it's all very visual and interactive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what sort of language interaction like tooling exists around Cacoon? Because I know like Vim's been really developed for a long time. You can get a lot of nice things working, but I don't actually know what the ecosystem around Cacoon is like. The Cacoon ecosystem is not nearly as big as you might imagine. Uh, it's very niche. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a very well-made LSP integration, mm -hmm. which is pretty much all I need. I, so I use the Cacoon, I use the LSP. There's also a bunch of other things. Uh, if you've heard of the Primogen's Harpoon plugin, for NeoVim, mm -hmm. uh, I made a Cacoon version of that because I really liked how it worked and I wanted it for myself. So, but other than that, it's usually just it's usually the plain experience for me. Mm -hmm. What does that uh, that plugin do? Because I've not used it. It allows you to pin certain files. So, for example, if I'm adding a new entity to Factorio, I can pin the entities class file. Mm -hmm. Then I can pin like the Lua definitions class file. Uh, and then I can quickly switch between them using Alt One and Two and Three and Four and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So it's it just lets you pin certain buffers to a, a convenient hotkey so you can get back to where you were originally after you go through a long go to definition chain. Mm -hmm. Huh. Okay, that's It's been makes, very nice. Yeah, that does make it sound like really really simple to use because I guess like you cuz I I use uh VS Code to do my code stuff. I I it, I use I, I use VS I use VS Code with a NeoVim plugin. So there you go. You know, I forgive you. Um, you can I guess do similar things in VS Code because it does always show like all of your tabs along the top. But I guess having a very quick way to just find a hotkey to jump right back and forth actually would make that 
considerably easier. I've always felt like I should probably sit down and actually learn NeoVim. Like, I, I, I know the basics of it, and I feel more comfortable when I'm editing in NeoVim, but I don't really use a lot of the additional functionality, and I guess that's part of the reason why I never properly sat down and used Kakoon either. Like, I don't know. I, I, I totally get it. I see people who are really big on editors like this, or like Emacs, who have everything down to individual hotkeys and know exactly what they need to press to do every single operation, and it seems more efficient. It's just a matter of, you know, getting to the point where you don't have to think about any of the syntax. It's like, you know, when you get really familiar with a language, right? Where you're like a programming language, where you're no longer looking up what does this function mean? What does this function take as arguments? How do I use this? What What is this library? What is that library? You have a innate understanding of how all these pieces fit together, and you can just hack on it and not really think about it. And I'm sure when you get an editor to that state as well, it just becomes second nature for anything you want to do. Precisely. The whole idea is to decrease the amount of friction between your brain and the code. Mm -hmm. So in my case, uh, uh, the base setup is pretty good for that. Mm -hmm. But for a lot of people, they want something where, hey, I can click here to go here. And I don't fault anyone for using the tool that suits them best. Like, I'm not going to be one of those people who says, oh, you have to use Catku and everything else is garbage. Even though I made that joke earlier, I wasn't serious <laughs> about it. Uh, use whatever is the best tool for you. And if you really want to try to get into these more niche things like Vim or Emacs or Catku, mm -hmm. then give it a shot. How long did it take you to get comfortable with it? I had used NeoVim for a couple months before, so the idea of a modal editor wasn't new. Mm -hmm. But it definitely took some adjusting to get used to doing everything backwards. Mm -hmm. Fortunately for Catcoon, it was designed very sensibly. Like Everything is very orthogonal and makes sense. Uh, there's a lot of keys that are uh, mnemonic, is the word I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's fairly consistent throughout the editor. Uh, one of my main complaints with Vim that m led me to like wanting to try Catcoon was Vim is mostly mnemonic, but there are a lot of things under the G key that you just have no idea what's going to happen. And it makes no sense. And it's just an accumulation of cruft over the last several decades of work yeah. that they can't get rid of because it would break everyone. Well, my favorite is the, my favorite bit of cruft with Vim is the core bit of cruft, HJKNL. People over the years have come up with reasons why HJKNL is so great, you know, home row and all that. But the original reason for it is because of the keyboard that Vi was, uh, was initially, was it? No, before Vi. No, 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 it was Vi. Okay. I'll, yeah. Vi is the reason why the hotkeys exist, not EX or Ed. Yeah. So Vi was made on a keyboard where the arrow keys were an alt key on HJKNL. And that's the reason why it's there because it made sense on that keyboard, but People are just used to that now. That is the thing that you use Vim for. You know, everyone knows Vim, HJKNL, and there's not really a reason to change it now that people have got these other reasons around it. But I guess that makes sense with the mnemonics as well, where you have the core mnemonics that make sense, you know, change, you know, things like that. But yeah, at some point you run out of keys to do mnemonics, so it's kind of just like you have to fit them in there where they, wherever you can get them. Yeah, precisely. On another note, I just looked at my Kakoon configuration mm. and I just realized it's a thousand lines long, so I guess I'm not using the vanilla ad after all. There's a lot of plugins in here I forgot I had. <laughs> I guess that's. A... I need to do a rewrite. I guess. Would you actually use the plugins, or do you not even remember what they what they were? Oh, no, now that I'm looking through them, I forgot that they weren't a part of the editor. Ah, okay. Like, there's auto pairs. is not built into the editor, but mm -hmm. I have it. Oh, okay, yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah, that's one but of yeah, the... it's... Oh, go ahead. I, I was going to say, that's, that's one of the reasons why it's always... I, I always question whether or not you should use one of these, like, NeoVim distributions where, you know, they'll include a bunch of additional plugins, a bunch of different configurations by default, rather than starting from something from scratch and then building up from there. Because if you are starting with a big distribution, it can be hard to differentiate what is NeoVim, or in Kakoon's case, what is Kakoon, and what is 
something additional added to it. And there's nothing wrong with using additional things. I used plugins when I was using NeoVim fairly actively. It's just, if you want to start modifying things, it's pretty important to know where things are actually coming from. Exactly. And like I said before, uh, use the tool that's best for you, not the thing that you think is the coolest. Mm -hmm. I switched from Arch to Fedora because I was sick of setting things up from scratch every time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wanted things to just work. Mm -hmm. That is a, you know, that's a fair enough reason. I, I get that. That said, I still uninstall, like, I don't uninstall GNOME, but I disable it and switch to Sway instead because I just can't live without Sway anymore. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's fair enough.